disciplines are becoming converged. They're moving together. If you think about what I started with, I was using a Pantone pen and I was sketching, probably using a light box and some trace. Now we're listening to the voice of the athlete and we're listening to their digital signature. We're collecting data directly off the athlete and then we're building product for the athlete in real time against the real conditions. So we're changing the relationship and what we're building and how we're building it. So designers have to work differently and they have to collaborate with different people. To produce this, this is the track spike for Rio, which you'll probably see in about six weeks um, from Brazil. This is 100% the product of generative design. And so every single stitch on there is calculated for performance to the individual who's wearing it. The bottom of that shoe, the plate, is also designed that same way, using generative design, rapid prototyping, and additive manufacturing, or 3D printing. So we're getting to the point where we get to personalized performance, one-on-one. -on -one. But uh, as I mentioned, Nike is a company which is extremely dimensional and allows their designers to have multiple careers over a lifespan. I've done many things. I've done performance products. I've done what we call now sportswear, which never existed probably you know, 15 years ago or not as prevalent as it is today. But I had the opportunity to move from doing product to retail design about uh, five years ago. And I wanted to take all the principles of what I'd learned about minimal design, around recovery, closed loop, and recycling into that world. I couldn't understand why we would create an eight ounce track spike and put it on a 500 pound table. How do we balance that relationship and that ethos? So I started working on retail. And then at first, it was about using recycled materials. How can I collect materials from gymnasiums, bleachers, seating, and reappropriate it inside of our stores? So I was giving it an extended life, but also a new aesthetic. So the wall you see there is actually a gymnasium floor, but it's ver made vertical. And we've given it more life, and that was collected from the local community. But in 2014, I was given the opportunity to open 17 stores globally, which really started to close the loop. And when I mean the loop, I mean the infinite loop between product and retail. I'm going to talk a little bit about the future now. Like I said, the future is going to be very different, and it's going to be a little bit disruptive. You're living in an age of dramatic change where not one thing is changing, but multiple things are changing simultaneously. Individually, these things may not be enough to make a change, but when you put them together collectively, they create huge disruption and impact. Whether it be the rise of the middle class, the shift to digital, mass urbanization, the advent of new materials, generative design, additive manufacturing, flexible manufacturing, makers movement, I could go on. But I think most of you who know what's going on know what these represent. Massive disruption and change in the design culture, manufacturing culture, and also the supply chain, and how we bring it together collectively to develop and deliver a new business model. So some of the tools of which design, at least at Nike, have been asked to do and work with is the data or the listening to the voice of the athlete, which drives new form and language, new material science, which plays into that, which is also critically important, the method of make. If you have proprietary materials and you have proprietary methods of make, you can deliver proprietary benefits to the consumer in the form of a product or a service. The rise of artificial intelligence, also extremely critical. Now these usually are separate disciplines, but they're all becoming one. They're all becoming collected together to deliver new experiences. Also biology, synthetic biology or synthetic materials are also playing a larger role. And they pose a question as to what the athlete of the future will look like. What will an augmented athlete be? The asterisk on the end of athlete actually means if you have a body, you are an athlete. And it makes us ask some difficult questions, answer some difficult questions as to what ethically is correct. So I want you to pause for a minute because you have a very powerful pulpit as a designer, as a creative, and as a thinker, and as a leader. And you're a new generation with new tools. You have to think what you're going to do with those tools. You have immense power. So consider what you're going to do with that power and the implications of what you do with it and how you use that power. Are you going to use it for good or are you going to use it for bad? But consider the impact of your decisions at every moment. You have many more choices than any other generation before you as a creative, as a designer, and as an engineer. So just think about that. There's a couple of things I want you to consider because you have the responsibility of future generations and your own in your hands. So creativity is a mindset, it's not a job title. So if you think you're looking for a business card, it's not what it's about. 
Good design always solves problems. But as many times I've been given a brief and I'm pondering, what am I actually solving here? I go away and create my own problem. And my problem throughout my entire life is around solving things by doing more with less, reducing my impact by maximizing also the efficiencies of things around. Innovation creates new expressions of style. If you think of Nike product and those brands that focus on innovation, they drive culture forward. New form, new materials, new textures, new languages, new experiences. They contribute something which then become reappropriated. New adjacencies are created. I guarantee most of you wear sneakers with a suit or with an alternate pair of, pair of jeans. That's because it was designed with true problems in, in, in envisioned. Great brands create movement. They don't create items. They can think you can see the movement we're trying to create. And stay curious and collaborate like crazy. No one person has all the answers. No one person. So you can be competitive with one another, but collaborate with one another. And most of all, do it with integrity. It's important to conduct yourself with immense amount of integrity and with principles. <laughs>